All too often it takes a catastrophe to make us learn about other parts of the world. That certainly applies to the recent devastating earthquakes in Nepal. One local response is a classroom project by our guest who teaches Japanese language in the Boston Public Schools. We'd like to welcome Tim Nagawaka. Thank you very much for being with us, Tim. Thank you. Tim, I want to start with your own reactions to uh, the earthquakes in Nepal. What, what did you feel? So, um, in Japan, um, we get earthquakes very frequently, and anytime there's an earthquake anywhere in the world, um, it feels very personal to me. And um, I personally am an earthquake survivor. Um, I actually experienced a magnitude 7.0 earthquake in Kobe 20 years ago. And so, um, the Monday right after the earthquake in Nepal, I talked to my students about my experience and talked about how the people in Nepal must, what they must be going through with my students. And we discussed what we could do to help them. And I talked to them about what we did four years ago when there was the earthquake and tsunami that struck Northeast Japan, which was to make a thousand paper cranes for the people in Japan. So all my students in um, six schools, I teach 13 homerooms, and that's about 300 students. We all agreed to work together to make a thousand paper cranes, and I did promise them that I would find someone in some organization that will help me bring the paper cranes to Nepal. Uh, an earthquake is a terrible thing to live through, but, but once you've managed to do that, uh, what about the long-term effect? This, this must be some kind of a post-traumatic experience we're talking about, too. Um, definitely, there is a survivor's guilt. And um, many times, um, I remember 20 years ago when I was in, in high school, when I experienced the earthquake, I, feel, I felt a sense of isolation. Because even 10 days after the earthquake, um, I traveled, and there was no public transportation because everything was down. I traveled maybe 30 miles to the nearest city that wasn't affected, and I saw that everyone else was living their regular lives. So as a victim, I know how um, with the media cycle that um, people move on. And maybe for a couple of days, um, they focus on the earthquake but then they usually move on. So I really wanted to make sure that the people of Nepal knew that in Boston, there were children that were thinking about them and that were working hard to make um, the paper cranes for them. And explain the paper cranes, because this, this also comes out of a story uh, from Japan. And you know there's, there's an element yes. of trauma involved in that as well. Yes. So um, cranes in Japan symbolize longevity and um, luck and good fortune. And there is a tradition in Japan where if you make a thousand paper cranes, your wish comes true. And there's a story which became very popular in the United States about a girl named Sadako, um, about a girl who um, got leukemia from the radiation of the atomic bomb. And she, at the age of 12, she, when she was hospitalized, she tried to make a thousand paper cranes in hopes that she would get a wish to get cured. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to, but her classmates continued her effort and they actually made a thousand paper cranes for her. And they even um, sent letters to the mayor. And because of the efforts after she died and because of the efforts of her classmates, they built a statue um, near the Hiroshima um, atomic bomb dome. And um, so every, um, in August, um, every year there are um, children throughout Japan who make a thousand paper cranes and send it to um, the statue of Sadako. Now you, you want to see uh, if you can get these cranes. You, you got them made by your students, so you got to get them to Nepal. How are you going to do that? Um, I'm hoping that um, some some organization that is connected to Nepal or that's doing disaster relief with Nepal will learn about what we've been doing in the Boston Public Schools and hopefully they can lend us a hand 
so that we can get the thousand paper cranes. And hopefully, I want them to put it somewhere that the victims of the earthquake can see, maybe somewhere like an evacuation center. And I have also taken pictures of my students with the paper cranes so that um, maybe they can also post the pictures to show the children behind the paper cranes who made the paper cranes for them. I imagine this will have some impact on, on the survivors because you mentioned Hiroshima and if I remember the story in Japan was that survivors were also made pariahs too. So in other words, if you're showing some kind of bonding with them, that can make a difference. Yes, I agree. And uh, what was it like in your class? If you have students working on this, uh, some talking about this, what was that like? Um, I would call it controlled chaos. Um, but definitely there are some students that are better at folding than others. But usually by the end of, by the time that we were finishing up the thousand, even the students that were having trouble at the beginning um, were getting better at folding paper cranes. And I personally feel um, that um, students don't get enough arts and craft in school. And I believe that origami is a very good way for students to see um, what um, quality is. So if they work hard and if they align the corners, they can get a good paper crane and not an ugly duckling, which I like to refer to when they don't fold it neatly. Um, so definitely um, doing origami helps the students follow directions and also learn the importance of make, doing quality work. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Tim Nagawaka. We'll have more news in just a moment.